Hi, my name is Jeannie Norris and I work at the Institute for School Partnership at Washington University here in St. Louis. Today I'll be teaching science for third grade, but learners of all ages are welcome to join me. I'm so glad you're here with me today. And we are outside again because outside, as long as it's safe, is really the best place to learn about weather, right? So let's look around and think about what the weather is like today. Why don't you take a look around? All right, what do you think? What is the weather like today where I'm at? You might have noticed that it's cloudy, but the sun is peeking through a little bit at times and it's windy. So we're going to explore the weather and how we can measure weather today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so remember, if we wanna figure out things about the world around us, we've gotta do two first steps, notice and wonder. So let's make a simple chart to track what we notice and wonder. You can draw an eye to represent the word notice. Things that you notice are things that you observe with your senses, like with your eyes, your ears, your nose, your hands. And then we're going to draw a question mark for what we wonder. What we wonder are questions that we have about what we notice. So we can make that a T-chart. So let's think about this weather that I've been experiencing lately, and you probably have too. What do you notice about the weather? Well, I notice that it has started to be a lot cooler lately. It's cooler now that autumn has started. What else? What do we notice? I notice that it seems like it's been a little bit rainier lately. What else? I've noticed that it's been really windy too. Okay, what else? Anything else that you would add to that list? Maybe that there have been more gray clouds. Bet you have a lot of questions about those observations about weather. What should we start with? Maybe, is it always cool in the autumn in St. Louis? Maybe, I kind of wonder, is it cool everywhere in the, audio, in the autumn? Is it cool in other places? Maybe we're wondering, what is the temperature outside in autumn? Hmm. 
maybe we wonder why is there more rain lately? Like, does that have something to do with the autumn? Do the gray clouds have something to do with autumn? Hmm, there are actually, I mean, does the wind have anything to do with autumn? I think we could add all of those questions too. What do you think? What questions would you add to this? Hmm, okay, well, let's go ahead and start to explore this a little bit deeper. So, if you want to really explore weather on your own, I think that the best way to do it is to record things that you observe in your science notebook. Do you have a science notebook? It can be any type of notebook. This is my son's and he labeled it with the subject that it is. And I'm gonna just show you a few examples of the types of things that you can be doing in your science notebook. And it doesn't have to be a school thing. I mean, I know that teachers give you assignments and that's really great, but it can also be something that you do at home for fun, just to keep track of the world around you. So let's take a look at some examples of the types of things that you can put in your science notebook. You can put writings in your science notebooks. So he talked about a creek that we went to. You can do some research in your science notebook and he did some research on droughts, for example. You can draw pictures of what you see in your science notebook. You can see here he made a map of our backyard and so another thing that you can do in your science notebook is, let me find a good page, we can record some data. And so if you want to record weather data, you're going to need to have the date, you're going to need to have the time, you're going to need to record the temperature, and you're going to make any sort of observations or notes. Notes could be like, was it raining? Was it cloudy? Was it windy? Anything like that. You can make different columns if you wanted to. You could make a column for precipitation or rain or snow or things like that, um, but, or you can just put it under the notes section. So, for example, let's say that we started recording the weather on October 1st, 2020. And when you record the weather, you might wanna do it at the same time every day. So let's say that we do it at 2 p.m. every day. And then you would write the temperature. Now you can find the temperature using a thermometer or you can go on a weather app um, on your phone, or you can even watch the news and see the temperature that way. And then make any notes by looking outside and seeing what the weather is like. So here we have collected some data from the month of October of this year, 2020. And we're going to try to notice any sort of just general observations we can make about this data. So you'll notice that the temperatures are in the 60s, then the 50s, 60s, 70s, up to the 80s. And then it really goes up and down like that. So you'll see some more 80s, you'll see some 60s, even some 50s here. So if you take, this is a bit more than third grade math, but if you take what is the average of all of these numbers, you add them all up and you divide them by the number of days, you'll see that the average temperature or typical temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And 72, I don't know, can you imagine what that feels like? It's probably the temperature of your school or a home, it's usually what people set their thermostat to is around 72 degrees. So that's a pretty comfortable temperature, but you can see that sometimes we went much higher than that, um, and sometimes we went much lower than that. But on average, it's about 72 degrees. You also will notice some notes that we made here. So we saw some cloudy days, some sunny days, and then it 
goes back and forth, cloudy, sunny, and then towards the end here you see some more rainy days. All right, let's go ahead and read a little bit about weather and see if that helps us figure out anything else about what type of weather we are experiencing and how we can measure that weather. This book is called What is Weather? And it is by Robin Johnson and it is published by Crabtree Publishing. What is weather? Weather is what the air and sky are like each day. Some days the air is very cold and the sky is cloudy. Snow may fall from the clouds. You can catch snowflakes on your tongue. Other days the air is warm and the sky is sunny. You can catch butterflies and baseballs in your yard. Parts of weather. Sunshine, clouds, wind, water, and temperature are all parts of weather. Temperature is how warm or cold the air is. When the temperature is warm, water falls from the clouds as rain. When the temperature is cold, water falls as snow. Water, water that falls from the sky in liquid or solid form is called precipitation. So precipitation is water falling from the sky. Weather changes. Weather changes from day to day. You can see and feel that the weather is different each day. Some days you can see clouds moving across the sky and rain dripping down your window. Other days you can feel cool wind on your skin and in your hair. Wind is moving air. What weather do you see and feel today? Remember, I felt windy, cool air. Um, and I, I also saw a lot of clouds in the sky and they were predicting rain. That's what kind of weather I was experiencing, I'm experiencing today. Weather can change quickly. A sunny picnic lunch can be canceled by a sudden rain shower. Has that ever happened to you? Has an event that you really wanted to go to ever been canceled because of the weather? Have you ever had a snow day maybe? Those are fun. The earth and sun. The sun makes weather on earth. Did you know that? Okay, I gotta admit, I did not know that when until I was an adult, that the sun is the cause of the weather on earth, but it is. The sun shines on earth and heats the ground. Well, that's easy enough. I think we probably knew that. The ground heats the air above it, giving us warm temperatures. Now that, that is something that was really cool for me to understand, that the sun warms our air up and that is why the air moves and that is why we experience weather. The sun gives us seasons too. A season is a time of year with certain weather. The sun also heats water on earth. The heated water evaporates or turns from a liquid to a gas. The gas rises up and turns into clouds. The water then falls back to earth as precipitation. So here we have the sun it's warming up, let's say it's a lake, and then as the water warms up, it evaporates. Do you know that word evaporation? It's when water is going from a liquid to a gas, and then it's going to condense into clouds. Condensation is when clouds form because the, the water condenses together. And then once it, once it accumulates enough, it's going to fall back to the earth as precipitation, such as rain or snow. Okay, so you're noticing maybe that this is following a circle or cycle. So this is the water cycle that we are seeing right here. And so the sun is driving this water cycle and that is why we experience the weather that we do on earth. Here comes the sun. Earth travels around the sun once each year. As Earth moves, some areas on Earth get more sunlight than others at certain times of year. This makes our seasons. For example, in summer, North America is closer to the sun, so the days are hotter and there are more hours of sunlight. So, do you remember this word? You might have learned it maybe in first grade. The word for the Earth moving around the sun. 
its revolution. So as the Earth revolves around the sun, it is at different locations throughout the year, and that is causing different places on Earth to experience different seasons. Pretty cool. Do you remember the word for when the Earth spins on its axis over one day? That's called rotation. Okay, so we have rotation and then we have revolution. And so that is causing the changes in temperature that we experience as well. The four seasons. Each year has four seasons in many parts of the world. They are winter, spring, summer, and fall. The weather is different in each season. Different parts of the world have seasons at different times of the year. For example, when it is winter in North America, it is summer in Australia. So right now we're headed into winter, but people in Australia or South America, basically anything that is in the Southern Hemisphere, they're experiencing the opposite. They're starting their summer. You might think that they're lucky or not lucky, depending on how much you like summer, right? The four seasons always change in the same pattern. Winter is the coldest season. Then the air becomes warmer in spring. Summer follows spring with hot temperatures. Then the air starts to feel cold, cooler as fall begins. Winter starts again after fall. It's another cycle. So here we had the water cycle. And here we have the cycle of the seasons that we experience. Studying the weather. Ooh, this is pretty cool. Scientists that study and measure the weather are called meteorologists. Have you ever heard of meteorologists before? Maybe you watch them on the news. They're pretty interesting. Meteorologists keep track of the weather to see how it changes over time. They watch and predict what the weather will be like. To predict means to tell what will happen in the future. Meteorologists warn people when there are storms on the way. That's going to be even another episode. Not the next episode, but the episode after this, we're going to talk about hazardous weather. It's going to be really interesting. All right, so what do you think? Why else is it important to know what the weather will be like each day? Well, hmm, I don't know. Maybe so you know how to dress, so you know to bring an umbrella, you know to not plan a picnic. Lots of different reasons. Weather tools. Meteorologists use many tools to help them predict the weather. They use thermometers to measure the temperature of the air. Meteorologists use wind vanes and wind socks to figure out which direction the wind is blowing. They use rain gauges to measure how much rain falls. So here we have a couple of weather tools. We have a wind sock, a wind vane, and a temperature, or I'm sorry, a thermometer that measures temperature. You know, I know that in third grade we study a lot of like root words and prefixes and suffixes and things. I've seen a couple in this book that kind of just make me kind of happy that I know that what these parts of the words mean. Like thermo meaning heat and meter meaning measure. And then if you go back here, the shun suffix, it's like a process or act of. And then it's not on here, but condensation, con meaning to come together. That's pretty cool, huh? You can use your prefixes and suffixes and root words to figure out what these tricky science words mean. And then you can make charts. Just like I was showing you in the science notebook, you can make charts about the different weather and what you are experiencing daily and try to make conclusions about the patterns that you notice. So you can interpret the data and notice that there were a lot of partly cloudy days, and then second highest would be cloudy and sunny, not that many dark clouds, okay? So you can interpret the data that way. And there's one more thing that I want to show you here, and that is reading a bar graph. So you can use the data from your tally chart to create a bar graph. A bar graph is a useful tool for combining data. Okay, so let's take a look here. 
and we can use it to compare data too. So we have the features of a bar chart that are very important. We have the different types of weather that is on one axis. And we have the number of days that is on the, the Y axis or the vertical axis. And we have a title, weather this month. And then you use whatever you made in your tally chart to make your bar chart. So here we have, you can interpret it. You can see sunny days. There were six of them. Partly sunny, there were 10. And you can go on down the line and we can make sure that it matches our data. So sunny days, there are six tally marks. Partly sunny, there are 10. So that matches the tally chart. And that is how you make a bar chart. And it is a very useful tool to compare data. And because look at how visual it makes it. It shows you very easily that this is the highest amount of days that were experienced were partly cloudy. How about the lowest amount? What was the lowest amount of, of type of weather that was experienced? It's pretty easy to see here that dark gray cloudy day was the least common. All right. So that is our book. What is weather? That had a lot of interesting things in it, didn't it? I really enjoyed that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and make two weather instruments that can help us measure and think about the weather. One is a rain gauge. Now we have this type of a rain gauge in our yard and you can buy them at the store and they'll tell you how many inches or centimeters of rain that you get but you can also make one if you don't have one like this one. So what I have done is we took a two liter soda bottle and we cut the top off with scissors. So you're gonna need a grown up to do that part for you because it's kind of hard to push through this plastic with scissors. So get a grown up to cut off the top of the soda bottle. And then you're going to find some rocks. You can see we found rocks from our yard. They can be dirty, that doesn't matter. And we filled it up to this line with rocks. Then what you will do is you will take the top and you'll turn it over and you'll put it down tightly, right here like this, okay? So that the rain gets funneled down into it and not a lot of stuff can fall in there. Then what you will do is you will take a ruler and you can measure it in, in inches or centimeters. I'm gonna choose centimeters. And you'll put this ruler down here, okay? To where the zero centimeters is right at this line, okay? You could also, if you wanted to, you could tape it to the outside and that would make it a little bit easier to read. Whatever you're able to do is fine. So when you do that, you will be able to see if it rains, the rain will come down into this hole and it will get trapped down here and you'll be able to read how many centimeters or inches of rain that we have. So that's one weather tool that you can make. Another weather tool that you can make is a barometer. So if you wanna make a barometer, it measures air pressure. So air pressure can cause things like weather to change. So it could cause precipitation like rain or snow, for example. Um, so if you wanna make a barometer to measure the air pressure, you'll need a little jar like this. You'll need a balloon, a coffee stirrer. And if you don't have that, you could use a popsicle stick or a wooden coffee stirrer, whatever you can find that's kind of lightweight and long and slender. You'll need an index card and some rubber bands. And you'll need scissors to cut off the top of the balloon. So get help with those if you need to. So what you do is you cut off the top of the balloon, the long skinny part of the balloon, so that only this part remains. And then you're going to open it up and you're going to put it over 
the balloon or the, the bottle really tightly so that it looks like this. Okay. And then you're going to put a rubber band over it really tightly to make sure that it doesn't slip off and that no air gets in. Okay. And then you're going to take an index card or actually I'm getting ahead of myself. First take the coffee stirrer and you're going to put it flat onto the top of the balloon and you're going to tape it. Okay. And then you're going to take your index card and you're going to tape it like this. if we can tape the other side too. So that it stays on pretty good. And I'm gonna have to go inside and get one, but you're going to need a pen and you're gonna make a mark right where you see the coffee stirrer. And then if the air pressure changes, the coffee stirrer will either go down or up. If there's higher pressure, the air is pushing down more, it will go up. And if there's lower pressure, it will go down. And that can tell you a little bit about if the weather is getting ready to change maybe. All right, do you see what's happening students? It started raining. It makes perfect sense, right? Because we saw that the sky was dark gray and it was getting windy. So it only makes sense that it would start raining. All right, well, I hope that you got some of your questions answered about weather. And in future episodes, we will explore different types of weather around the world and different weather hazards and how weather differs from place to place. So in the meantime, I hope that you keep noticing and wondering all week long because that's the most important thing that you can do. All right, thanks for joining me. See you later. made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.